This is the screencast for Lesson 9 in Stephen C Sharp 24 Hour Trainer. This lesson talked about adding new forms to a project, and in this try it, you get to build an application that has a main form and then four remote or satellite forms. For this screencast, I've already built the getting around lodging and fun stuff forms. I'll show you how to build the getting there form, and you can build the others, they're very similar. So to add a new form to the project, we just go to the project menu, select Add Windows Form. Give it a good name. I'm going to call this the Getting There form. And here's our new form. So now we simply add controls to it. Let's start with a label that we're going to use as a title up here. We'll set its text to How Do You Want to Get There? I'm going to make its font bigger so it looks more like a title. We'll make this 20 point and resize the form so that the user can see the whole label. We'll add a list box to the form. Uh, this program doesn't do anything with the list box. A real program would. So we should give it a good name. I'm going to call it the choice list box. To set its items, we go to the items property. <coughs> select the ellipsis to the right to get a string collection editor. And we just type in the values we want to give it. So yak, $120, bus, $240, airplane, $480. And if you're Bill Gates, you can afford the space shuttle for $20 million. We'll come back over here and make the control, give it a nice size. And then the last things we want to add to this form are some buttons. In the next lesson, you'll learn how to make custom dialogues. So I'm kind of setting things up for that. We'll create a couple of buttons here in the lower right corner. This is going to be the OK button. I'll change its name to OK button. And this other button is going to be our Cancel button. So I'll give it a good name and change its text to Cancel. I also want these buttons to stick to the lower right corner, so I'm going to set their anchor properties to bottom right. So now if I resize the form, they'll stay where I want them. <coughs> because I'm thinking about using this form as a dialog, I'm going to make a couple other changes to the form itself. So I'll select the form. I'm going to change the form border style to fixed dialog, so it looks like a dialog and the user cannot resize it. And I'm going to set Show in Taskbar to False. If I don't do that, this program has a main form and then four other forms. And if I display them all at the same time and they all appear in the taskbar, there'll be five icons in the taskbar and we'll kind of clutter things up. So I'm going to make the main form will be in the taskbar, the others will not. So that's it for building this form. It doesn't do anything. Let's go back to the main program and display that form. So in this application, I've chosen to create variables to refer to these forms out here at the class level. So they're not inside any of these uh, methods. That means every method in this class can see them. So this is the getting there form. I'll call it the getting there form. And down here in the form load event handler, I'm initializing them. So I'm going to say the getting there form equals new getting there form. Finally, the event handler for the getting there button, we just say the getting there form dot show. If I run the program and click the button, there's our form. Now, one thing about this, um, the way this program works by default is if I close these forms, no big deal. Okay. Let me run the program again, and this time I'll create a couple of these other forms. Now if I close the main form, the entire application goes away. So by default, the way these programs are set up is there is one main form, and it de determines when the entire application ends. So it's usually useful to make that form stand out somehow so the user can tell if I close this form, everything's going to go away. And that's about it for this example.